Oh. <laughs> No, it's, it goes up and down quite a bit, doesn't it? We need to come back out. <laughs> Does it do why? Was there why strong been inside? Yeah, I know what you mean. Just ripping through. You need to go up. Perfect. Welcome along to the vlog, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I thought I'd better get a bit of footage today because this might be the last time that you actually see me appearing on video if this goes wrong. So what the hell is going on here? Well, we have a huge cast in place concrete lintel that spanned a door and a side light. Total width approximately seven feet or um, two meters. I thought we could probably measure it if I can lay hands on a tape measure. I can see one in there. And the idea of getting this down is um, it's not an easy one. So as you can see, we've built a tower scaffold and this tower scaffold is locked in to certain positions so it can't move it's like locked into the wall here and things like that and then the idea is we throw fittings underneath the fittings that are holding this up as backstops and we slowly loosen off these just so they slide down an inch at a time or maybe 50 mil two inches if we're lucky uh, I've just done the other side and that's gone down. That one went quite rapidly. This one's a bit different because there's some tape on the scaffold tube. Now I'm going to do this side and then ultimately we come down inch by inch all the way down to the ground where we can then either pop it on rollers and roll it out the building or we can just smash it up where it is with the sledgehammer and cut through the rebar with a grinder we'll see but it's quite sketchy and I can't really get a genie hoist in here and I did think about getting my cable hoist hooked up in the loft picking it up and then lowering it down with that but I'm not sure I can say that this weighs less than 500 kilograms and that hoist the cables rated for 500 kilograms I know it would probably pick up a ton, but it's not a risk I'm willing to take in my family home. Because if this comes crashing down, it could take any number of things with it. So, uh, slowly, slowly catch a monkey, as they say. So we'll come back in a little bit of time when we're perhaps closer to this brick here. And then the idea is we just take out each brick here i'm not going to go to the whole trouble of knocking all this wall down i might have to knock that wall down though we'll see um just because i couldn't put any scaffolding poles further back because of the flooring upstairs so uh there isn't enough room on there to slide it all the way down uh yeah that's going to be quite tricky then isn't it because i'm going to have to take both the internal and external wall down there bollocks i never thought of that and just like that, just like that with the magic of video, we have one lintel gone. The time is actually 25 to 11. It's taken us a long time to get that down. The scaffolding's gone. We did it inch by inch. And then when we got down to the bottom level, we tilted it out. We slid it off onto these two blocks using a piece of wood as a lever. And it worked a treat. I reckon that is close to half a ton. So, well, 400 kilograms, if not half a ton. So it was a very difficult piece of gravity to move. Anyway, that's a little update from today, um, which is, I think, the 15th of August. 
wow, where's the year gone? I know. And I'm not just going to put this in one video. We'll add some more stuff to it tomorrow or the day after. Or we're actually, we're installing a new oven at the pub tomorrow. So hopefully we'll be able to pick up a bit of footage for that. Which is not build related. But it's pub and work related. So I'm sure you'll enjoy it anyway. So let's fast forward to whatever footage I decide to film tomorrow. Wow, it's the next day. Um, I've just shot home at uh, 10 to 2. We've installed the rationale. I've also got a skip on site for the extension build. I didn't mention this yesterday. So that's how you fill a skip, folks. We'll be able to fill it right up to the brim with these greedy boards on the side. So, uh, yeah, we've got the rationale installed. Look at this lot. And I have to now go back and help with prep because we've run on a little bit longer than anticipated. So I'll see if I can get some video on my return. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what I've been busy installing. Um, it's been tricky to get any footage of it, obviously in a working kitchen. And usually when I'm here, I am working. But we bought ourselves a Rationale iCombi Pro, or the pub has bought itself a Rationale iCombi Pro. Um, it's a combi oven. And I tell you what, it's an amazing bit of kit. I've got a few little clips that I'm going to show to you. Um, but I don't really have any like time-lapse footage or anything like that of this thing. But it basically is an extra man in the kitchen. This is an amazing oven. So we've got rid of the old oven that we used to have down here. Replaced it with a four burner, which is perfectly fine. In fact, it's a beast. And uh, what I'm going to do this morning is cook myself some uh, pastries as you can see we've got some pan au chocolat and some croissants in there and another good thing about the rationale is you can put all your grills in there and it's self-cleaning like proper self-cleaning this thing when it's washing itself it looks like a dishwasher inside or a tumble uh, a washing machine and with the tablets that you use to clean it it'll clean all of the other stuff in the kitchen as well. Anyway, that's a quick rundown um, because I'm busy today. So uh, here's a couple of clips and uh, we'll pick this up later. Thought I might as well get a clip of this. So it's gonna do us some croissants. At the minute, the oven's preheating. Look at that. And then the next, it's gonna ask us to load. Then it will provide a steam injection to puff up the pastries. And then it will bake at 177, bake at 167, and then it'll tell us that it's finished. So you'll see in a moment, this is almost at finish the preheat section um, yeah you'll see it tell us to load the goods which I've already got laid out on a tray here oh I had a phone call so uh, we missed that section but anyway we've loaded it's asked us to load and we've loaded and now it's filling the oven with steam at 120 degrees at 100% humidity. You can hear it steaming away and these will start 
to puff up. It's rather cool, isn't it? I'm very excited. In fact, you can see I'm swelling already. Did you hear the steam injection? Hopefully you can hear it over the fridge freezers, fridges and freezers behind us. Now we're in bake mode. Look at that babies. They're swelling up like mad. Oh, that one there's getting a bit excited. Calm down, sailor. What a bit of kit. They're finished. I am going to have to change that music though. Beautiful. So this is the second heaviest lintel in the house and the first one came down yesterday. Nasty sharp screw there. The first one came down yesterday in exactly the same way as I'm doing this one. Um, but I didn't get any time lapse of it I suppose so I thought this time I'll see if I can just get a little bit of footage so if anyone wants to try and do something like this you can do so just a quick rundown of a setup so we've got a scaffolding kind of uh, cube if you like just set up and two arms holding the weight of the lintel now yesterday because the lintel was particularly heavy heavier than this one I had an extra scaffold clamp underneath these ones so if this got away and started sliding fast it would hit that scaffolding clamp this one's a bit more of a manageable weight, at about 300 kilograms maybe. So uh, I'm less worried about that one. And then I've got a couple of cross braces down here. Everything's like squared up and braced. These two bars here, if you can see them, have grabbed hold of either side of this wall on both sides here and here. That stops the whole thing moving that way, like rocking side to side. And then this an angled one here is bolted down and that's inside the walls and it stops things moving that way. So there's very little twist or movement that can actually occur on the whole thing. So I'll go and grab my scaffolding spanner. We'll start to undo some more of these and you'll see it gradually come down to the ground. Right, well, we're going to call it a day at that. Well, I think you get the gist, and we're probably low enough now for me to stand above it and actually start hitting it with a breaker. If I wanted to, uh, I could just start smashing the edges and whatnot off. And I think we'll just shoot round this way. If it's any anything like the one that we did yesterday, Slightly L-shaped, this front section breaks away completely separately to the back section. And then all the rebar, I broke out of it. Here it is, here's the rebar from yesterday's. And it all came away nice and cleanly. And all of that now is in that skip.
This was just to protect some pipes. Yeah, do its job. And now covered in rubber. Right, I'm gonna bugger off and let the dust settle. 